What's up? What's up, people? It is 7.30. We just finished. The dogs are driving me crazy because I'm they're in their house because I'm getting ready to go and uh, the wind has been blowing my hair around. I'm getting ready to go get some, come here. Come on, bud. I'm getting ready to go get some dinner. We're gonna get some dinner, aren't we, Pee Pee? And uh, what are you doing? Oh no, I shit, I shouldn't have said that. Um, I'm gonna wait till I cut my hair. Wait till I get back to feed them. And um, Alex just got done with work and he is going over to his girlfriend's house and with her and her brother and they're gonna have dinner. And I was gonna actually meet up with them, but it is so cold outside, you guys. I just really don't even wanna, I just wanna go get something and put on my pajamas and stay here. And I'm thinking actually after I eat, I might take a little bit of a nap. Um, what do you think, peeps? No? He loves his naps. Don't you, pee pee? Don't you, pee pee? Don't you, pee pee? <gasps> what do you want? I know what you want. Well, Daddy's gonna run up to Noodles and Company and get something to eat, and when I come back, you'll get it, okay? So. Isn't he so cute? He's feeling pretty good today, aren't you? <gasps> Are you feeling pretty good today? What? Well, come here, I'll give you a treat while you wait. Alex, like, you're giving him treats constantly. I'm like, well, he's a good boy, he deserves them. What treat would you like? Okay, so I got these things, and they love them, and they're called <laughs> meatloaf morsels, and they're from Rachel Ray, and New York. let me just show you. They straight up smell like meatloaf, and they look like little bits of meatloaf. I would eat one, but I'm a vegetarian. What, PB? You want it? There you go. He loves his little treats. So, all right, well, I'll be right back on a little bit later. I'm gonna go get something to eat. Hello. <clears throat> well, it is 1.39 a.m. I just left the house a little bit ago. For taking the dogs out and all that kind of stuff. Alex just came to bed a little bit ago. Um, he actually didn't go over to his friend's house for dinner. He called me and said he was just going to come home. And I said, do you want to meet somewhere for dinner? And he was like, yeah, sure. And we were going to meet at Noodles and Company. But instead, we went to Puccini's, which is like this locally owned pasta place. They have like, I think, five or six of them in Indianapolis. And uh, he had a large cheese pizza, which he brought most of it home. And a glass of red wine. And I had a Dr. Pepper and... Uh, fettuccine pasta with this vodka cream sauce. It was really good. Although I kind of wanted it spicy and it wasn't really spicy. But it was good nonetheless. And we just sat there and kind of caught up on our day. And I am so tired, you guys. This weather is just like wearing me out. I don't know why. It's making me so tired. And uh, so I came home and I said, I'm going to lay down for a little bit. And he said, okay. And we were supposed to watch... Um, the assassination of Gianni Versace because it started tonight. Um, I don't know if you guys watched the O.J. Simpson. They did the, uh, the O.J. Simpson thing on FX like a year ago. Uh, Ryan Murphy who did... Uh, God, it's so cold in here. I'm trying to keep the heat off so that um, it doesn't get too hot and my camera overheats. But anyway... They did the O.J. Simpson thing last year, <clears throat> and then this is the, the second season of it, and they're doing the assassination of Gianni Versace, which Alex and I love fashion and style and stuff like that, so we're really excited about it. Plus, I totally remember that happening, and because um, I was really, I think it was 97, I was really into like Naomi Campbell, Linda Evangelista, Christy Turlington, all of those models back in the day. And he was kind of at the forefront of all of that. Gianni Versace was. And the hotel that we always stay at in Miami is um, the Victor Hotel, which is like right to the, it's exactly to the right of the Versace Mansion. So like if you're standing in front of the Versace Mansion, the hotel that we stay at is right to the right. And, um... So, I, I didn't watch it. I said, I gotta lay down. I'm sorry, I'll watch it later. And Alex was like, okay. He was like, well, I'm gonna watch it. Do you mind? And I was like, no, well, I'll watch it. He goes, well, I can watch it with you again this weekend. And I was like, no, that's okay. Just watch it now, and I'll catch it up, and then we'll start watching it together next week. So, then he came to bed, and uh, we were laying there talking forever. And um, 
about the whole thing and he was like, how do you know so much about Johnny Versace? I was like, because I wanted to be a fashion designer. Like, I was very interested in him back in the day and knew that, like, Donatella was her, his muse and that she didn't get along. You know, he was with his boyfriend for 15 years or something like that. 15 or, 15 or, I don't know, 15, 20 years? I think 15 years. I haven't watched it yet, so. Ricky Martin plays his boyfriend. Um, and Penelope Cruz plays Donatella Versace. And Alex told me that it's a Venezuelan actor that plays uh, Gianni Versace. So I'm excited to see it. I said to Alex, I was like, I think the age difference between Gianni and his boyfriend was like exactly that of us. It was like 12 or 13 years. I said, which means that I'm Gianni Versace and you're the boyfriend. And he goes, uh, and I said, which basically means that you're nobody. <laughs> and Alex goes, and you're dead. I go, oh my God, Alex, why would you say that? That's so mean. He goes, well, you are being mean too. I was like, whatever. BB has been sleeping all day long, and then at night, he is, like, super, super active. And, uh, it's, we don't understand it. Like, I don't know. I wish he wasn't sleeping so much during the day. But Tucker is the only one that doesn't really sleep. Tucker, I don't know when he sleeps. He doesn't sleep at night, either. Y'all see, I went and got a cup of coffee from the gas station because it was so cold. Which I'm, like, holding up here. Like, I don't know why, but... I love gas station coffee. Today was a good day. I got a lot of stuff done today. I have a been so I have really kind of like been I don't even know how to say this. I have like really realigned my spiritual beliefs lately. Not realigned them, but like I've been praying a lot more which was always such a big part of my recovery, but I kind of go in and out of phases of praying. And I've been praying a lot more. I have been, the gratitude list that I'm doing on a daily basis has like profoundly affected my life. Like really, really affected me. Um, I mean, every night to kind of look at what I'm grateful for in that day alone specifically. First of all, makes me appreciate each day but then it also makes me appreciate each little detail of each day. And uh, it's just been very cool to do. It's really kind of like, I don't know, and it's weird. I like, now I've just like list so many, I'm up to like 20 things a day that I list. And um, all of them, you know, from being very specific things to being like larger things, you know, like having a warm home to sleep in, all, you know, all the way to my health, to, I'm trying to think of something specific that I would put on there today. Like Alex doing the dish, like unloading the dishwasher. Um, to my nap. And uh, I wanted to get, so I, I really big into meditation books. And I don't have any like religious meditation books. I, so if, if, if you're newer to my vlog, you've heard me talk about this on here, but I don't consider myself a religious person. I consider myself a spiritual person. And through the years, I've kind of picked up pieces that mean something to me. You know, whether that's part of Christianity or part of Buddhism or a part of like Native American wisdom, I pick up tenets that I like. And really what I believe overall is in kindness, compassion, tolerance, love. Those I, I believe in those principles as far as being a better person. I do believe that there is some greater force out there. I just don't know that I know exactly what that is. Um, so I would say I fall from agnostic to being more of a believer. So for those of you that don't know, agnostic means that you believe in something, you just don't know really what it is. And uh, But I'm very uh, much a firm believer that there is something out there. And uh, then that's just my belief. I respect those that don't. You know, my husband is a complete atheist um, and has a lot of reasons why he is. And I respect that, you know, and I think that spiritual spirituality and spiritual beliefs have to be a personal thing. But um, lately, I feel like I've turned to it more. And as far as staying positive, removing resentments, you know, um, praying for me to, for understanding, compassion. And, and, and this is not just in my YouTube 
whatever. This is in my personal life as well because I have some issues going on in my personal life with friends, things I don't talk about on here, not because um, any other reason than I think it's too personal or because I don't want to. There's a lot of people in my life that don't want to be on my YouTube channel. So, like, I have, you know, a friend of mine. She doesn't watch my videos, but I, I love her, but she's difficult. Our relationship is difficult. And, you know, I've just been praying for that, praying on that relationship a lot, that it turns out the way that it's supposed to and things like that. Because I don't know, like, what my place is in that relationship. And I don't know what I'm supposed to do. And so I just kind of take it from day to day. But I was at Meyer, and I wanted to get a new meditation book. And it's weird because I usually get them from half-price books or from treatment facilities, like in the gift shops, although I haven't done that in a long time. Um, and I was sitting there and I was looking at the new bestseller list of the books and it was weird because there was a Joyce Myers meditation book that was not where it was supposed to be. It was like turned on its side, like in front of like Fantastic Beasts or something like that. I mean, it was right there in the bestseller, you know, thing. And it was like somebody had just taken it and put it there by accident. And I've known who Joyce Myers is for a long time because I've seen her on TV and I know a lot of people love her, but she's a little bit, she's a lot for me and she's very, you know, like right wing and whatever, but like Tanya loves her and I know a lot of people that really, really like her and uh, even people that are extremely liberal. And so I picked it up and I, this was yesterday and I went to what yesterday's was about, the meditation, and they're not like highly biblical uh, meditations at all. They'll have like a Bible verse, which I, uh, there's parts of the Bible that I think are absolutely beautiful. So, you know, I, that to me is not a turn off. And, um, so anyway, it was talking about, uh, yesterday's was that not wasting the day, like taking each day for example, exactly what it's supposed to be. And I was like, this is so weird. Cause I had just made a meditation or I had just made a Peterism's video about this, right? How important each day is and enjoying and respecting each day. And then here I am picking it out. So I read today's while I was standing there and it was about that everything happens in God's time, which I'm a believer. And I had just, you guys remember, I had just talked about this like a week ago when I was talking about acceptance is the answer to all of my problems today, um, that nothing happens in God's world by mistake. And I believe that. And I was like, oh my God. And so I ended up getting this meditation book and, um, I have felt so centered, balanced at peace and calm in the last two weeks. I can't even explain it to you guys. Like I feel so clear headed and, uh, you know, I was talking on here about, I don't know if it's being a vegetarian or I don't know if it's about drinking more water or whatever, but I really to some degree think that it has a lot to do with the gratitude list and, you know, being more focused. And when I say meditation, I want to make this very, very clear. You know, like I look at meditation from a 12 step point of view and meditation from a 12 step point of view, when it was written at the time that it was written was identified as deep thought. It did not mean like, you know, Buddhists sit down in, you know, a certain position. That's not the kind of meditation I'm talking about. I'm talking about when you sit down and, and with silence and you just kind of think about your intention for the day and who you want to be that day. And I do that. I try to do that every morning. Um, I'm, like almost every morning I do it now. I try to do it every morning where I sit down and I just kind of, you know, with a silence and I just think to myself about, okay, what do I want this day to be like? What do I want my role to be? How should I respond to the world today? You know, I want, I, can I choose kindness? And you know, that if things come my way, pause, don't react, respond. And you know, think about how you want to go forward. And um, that's really kind of how I try to start my day with that kind of moment of peace. I really try not to pick up my phone until I've done that. I try not to, you know, uh, look at any kind of social media or any out, you know, thing, anything from the world, uh, pop culture, you know, news, anything, any texts from family members or friends, any business, anything. I try not to look at any of it until I have kind of done that meditation, that self-talk to myself. And, uh, and then looked at my gratitude list from the night before and then also done like read one or two meditation books and done my prayers for the day. And then I feel kind of centered and balanced. And, uh, you know, I think for anybody and you don't have to be a religious person to do that or a spiritual person, you know, if you're really turned off by the idea of, you know, spirituality or whatever, 
you can do that and you can sit down and make a gratitude list and, and, and read what your gratitude list was from the night before and you know get a cup of tea or a glass of water I do it with a glass of water and just sit there in the chair and kind of give yourself five minutes it's five minutes out of your entire day you know to just sit there and think about the day to come and what you how do you want to re react to the world or respond to the world you know and uh, you know there's a lot of meditations out there meditation books those little meditation books that I talk about I used to talk about on my Peterism's channel that aren't really they're they're not religious or spiritual in any way whatsoever the one that I love by Linda Pacone is um, the Daily Book of Positive Quotations. I love that book so much. And, uh, you know, it doesn't have anything in it that's religious or spiritual. And um, it's just a way of thinking positively about the world. And I need that, you know? Like, I really need that some days. Because, you know, as an alcoholic and an addict in recovery, I'm trained to think of the glass as half empty instead of half full. And, um... It doesn't hurt me to have a few more tools in my toolbox as the day goes forward, I guess that's what I'm saying. But I don't know, like recently it's been like, you know, I mean, there are a lot of things that back in the day I would bitch and moan about. Oh, the snow, oh, the weather. And I do jokingly, or I talk about it on here like it's so cold or whatever. But like, you know, I'll look at the snow, like as I'm taking the dogs outside and I'll be like, it's so cold, but it's beautiful. You know, or like, wow, we got more snow, but it's beautiful. Or, you know, I woke up late today, but I got a really good a night's sleep. Things like that. Like, you know, I'm seeming to see the positives in all of the things at this point. And uh, for me, it's been like a really healthy way to live recently. I, I don't know. I just feel great. I feel, I feel blessed and I feel good. And uh, I don't want to take for granted each day. I don't want to take for granted any day you know, that I have on this earth, and I just really want to appreciate it, but not only that, not just live a day, I want to live the best day that I possibly can, and I feel like I've been doing that lately without doing anything that's, like, super exciting, you know, and, um, I, uh, had a meeting this afternoon, and before that, I, uh, like, I got up, and I filmed my videos before I left, because I was like, well, I'm not going to get back home until after 6, and then I'm going to have to film three videos after 6, and you guys know I love to put up videos every day, so I was going to do it, whether it was 8 o'clock at night, or whether it was, you know, you know, 6 o'clock at night, and so I got them all done except for my booktube video before I left, and then I was, like, leaving my office, and I thought, I had, like, the rest of the evening to do whatever I wanted to do, and I, like, ran some errands, and then, you know, talked to Alex, and that's when we went out to dinner, and it was really nice to have the rest of the day to just kind of relax. So, I don't know. I like planning out my days like that. I like, you know, having a positive outlook on the world. And uh, I was telling Tanya this today when I was talking to her earlier. It's like, she's like, well, because I was saying all this to her that I'm saying to you. And I was saying, and she was like, well, what's different now than was, you know, like, let's say, you know, six months ago, six weeks ago. And I said, well, nothing's really different except for that I have a design for living. I have all these tools in my toolbox, but sometimes I don't use them, you know. Sometimes I know they're there, but I don't utilize them on a daily basis. And it's like... I don't really know how to, and I'm trying to think of an analogy, but it's like, you know, if you go out in the world with a coat on, you're going to be warm, you know, but if you go out in the world with a coat, a hat, a mittens, boots, heavy socks, long underwear on, you're going to be really warm, you know, you're not going to be cold, and that's kind of how I feel right now, it's like before, I knew those things, and you know, like, I would you know, meditate in the morning sometimes. Sometimes I would read the book. Sometimes I wouldn't. I wasn't doing gratitude lists, even though I knew I should. You know, things like that. I was going to meetings, but I wasn't going to meetings as much as I'm going to meetings now. And, uh, you know, so I was wearing a coat out in the world. Whereas recently, I feel like I'm wearing a coat, a hat, mittens, long underwear, boots, and all of that, you know? And so it's really changing my perspective on the world. She's like, you know, that makes a lot of sense. And she's like, I think the more we're tapped in to all of that positive energy, the more positive energy that's going to come back to us. <clears throat> and not like in a weirdo, you know, energy, new agey kind of way. Although if that's what you believe in, that's cool, you know? 
but just in the more positivity you put out there in the world and the more positive people that you surround yourself with, the chances are you're going to be more positive. You know, like I tried to explain this to people for years and they wouldn't understand it. I'd be, they'd be like, why don't you like to surround yourself with negative people? Well, I can become a very negative person. If I'm around three people that are complaining all the time, I am going to complain. Okay, because that's in my nature who I am. But if I'm around three people that are constantly positive and they don't ever complain, I, I, I'm very rarely the one, you know, negative Nancy. I just don't. I like, I, be, I am more pop, more positive. And, um, you know, my husband is just not a complainer. I talked about that the other night on here, too. And he's really good for me. I love my ex. You know, I wish him all the best in the entire world. My ex. I added a T in there. No, I love my ex. He's a wonderful person. You know, I wish him all the best in the entire world. I think he's very happy with who he's with now and things like that. But, you know, like, we were very negative together. You know, I'd be like, oh, this snow fucking sucks. He's like, ah, oh, I, I can't stand it. Let's just stay inside all day long. And we just bitch about stuff, you know. We fed off each other with that negative. Negativity, and I don't think it's healthy. You know, I don't think it's healthy at all. And um, I've had friends in my life that are similar to that, that it's just not healthy to, you know, like feed off that negativity. I don't know. It's like, I don't, I don't know. Alex is so good for me on that because he just is positive all the time, you know? And even when he's being snarky and sarcastic, like I know it, you know? And so I don't know. He's just so easygoing and he worked like 12 hours today and I was like, do you want to go somewhere to dinner? And he wasn't like, fuck no, I want to go home and put my pajamas on. He was like, yeah, where do you want to meet? It'd be nice to have dinner and sit down and kind of, you know, he's always like that. So, and he's usually the one that suggests it. So the other thing is he doesn't tolerate me being negative. Like if I start getting negative, he'll just kind of look at me and he'll say like, okay, how long do you want to be negative about this? Cause I can listen to this for a little while, but I can't listen to this for the next two days. And I'm like, okay, you know, You know, like when I complain about shit like our patio not getting done, you know, like that drove him crazy. He's either, he was like, either call them and do something about it or stop complaining. And that's where Alex is like really good for me. Cause I'll complain about it for two weeks and never pick up the phone and do anything about it. <laughs> you know, cause I just want somebody to hear how I feel. And it's funny cause my dad is very similar to that. My dad, back in the day, I would call him up and I would bitch and complain about something, usually my mother. And he would say to me, are you calling me because you want a solution to your problem? Or are you calling me because you just want somebody else to have to share your misery? And I'd say, I don't know, dad. And he'd say, so because you're upset, you want me to be as miserable as you are. And I'd say, no. And he'd be like, well, then why are you calling and telling me this? You know how to fix the solution. Like, I think you just want me to have to feel the misery too. And I was like... Is that true? Like, am I that person, you know? And I think at times I was that person. I'm not today. I'm not that person today, you know? But, like, have you ever done that where you call somebody up and it's just like... I mean, really look at your motives in that situation. Because after my dad said that to me enough, I had to really take a look at that and be like, what's my intention of calling my dad every time something really shitty goes wrong in my life? Is it that I just need somebody to vent to? And, um... One of the things I love about, you know, going to a counselor now is that on, on my weeks that are just me alone is that it's really good for me to vent and get shit out to him. And then, you know, he'll take each one and look at it and say, well, have you ever looked at it this way? Or did you think about this? Or could you learn this lesson from this or whatever? And what's really healthy about that for me is that, you know, He's totally objective. Like, he's, on, I know I'm paying him to only be in it to help me. So he's not in it. He has no personal investment in it, right? So I know he's being 100% honest with me. So the things he's saying are only said to help me. And then if I'm going to him, I don't need to call my dad. I don't need to bitch and moan to Alex. And then our relationships improve because I'm not calling them or bitching and complaining about those things to them. And then I'm allowed to be positive when I'm with them. And that's fantastic, you know, because that's what they want is they want us to be, you know, have positive relationships. They don't want us to have this negative stuff. Alex's whole family is very positive. Like, his whole family, you know? His mom is always positive. She always sees things positively. You know, Alex's brother Carlos that works, I don't know, something ridiculous, like 15 hours a day, always sees it. I'm like, Carlos, how do you work? He works every day. I'm like, how do you see... He works every day. 
two jobs and on Sundays he works one job until like four. I'm like, Carlos, how are you so positive? He's like, what? I mean, like, yeah, like, what am I gonna do? <laughs> I mean, I'm not gonna do his voice, but he's always like, I mean, what, he's kind of like, what's the alternative? I'm still gonna have to do it, so why bitch and complain about it, you know? And I kind of like, my mom was very, I mean, I love my mom, and I talk a lot about her, you know, in my videos, and how wise she was, and she was, but she was a very negative woman at times. She just was, you know, and she saw things very negatively, and, you know, she was always upset about something, and, you know, it would take her, she was, she was like me. She kind of had to work it through on her own, in her own process, but then she would see, she'd be like, I don't know why I allowed it to upset me so much, and I could see it, and I could say, well, mom, why are you letting this upset you, but I could go through the same exact thing, and today I'm not willing to do that. Today I'm not willing to to hand over my happiness, you know? I'm just not. And it's not just some bullshit that I spout out in videos. Life is really short. We're really on borrowed time, you know? And I want to enjoy the best life possible. It's not bullshit to me. It just isn't, you know? And um, I think that if I could have everybody just get one lesson from the collected videos that I put out there on all four channels, what I would have them understand is this one lesson. Life is short. Whatever you're choosing to fill your day with on a daily basis, make sure that it's something that matters and that you love. Because if you don't, then you're wasting your life. Period. The other stuff just doesn't matter, you know? kind of a lecture, wasn't it? <laughs> no, but I mean, like, my vlogs for me are kind of reminders of where I've been and things I've gone through, you know, and I like to remember all that. That's like a really huge log cabin lodge set way back. It was a beautiful house. Um, I kind of have to remember this stuff, too. I kind of like these reminders. I mean, I need reminders of this stuff as well, you know, of like where I've come from, what my life was like, and all that kind of stuff. pumpkin and now my whole car smells like spiced pumpkin last year I read this I think it was last year the year before I read this book it was called the life we bury it was so good and it took place um, around this kind of like winter time weather and all this kind of stuff said something to me. Well, a couple people have made comments about the fact that I listen to audiobooks and I call that reading. And, uh, you know, it's interesting because that's kind of a big conversation on Goodreads. Like, there's a lot of people that don't consider that reading and there's a lot of people that consider it reading. I don't really con I don't really care what you consider it. It's my life and it, <laughs> I consider it reading, you know? Um, but, like, I think there's this misconception that all I ever do is just listen to audiobooks, which is not the case. Um, about, it, well, if you've watched my vlog for a long time, you'll know this because I talked about this on here. I, I always do around like readathons that there was a period when I was reading about six or seven books at the same time and, uh, uh, blah, 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 blah. and, um, That car, like, wasn't going to stop. It was kind of scary. Um, I was reading, like, six or seven books at the same time. And I couldn't keep track of what I was reading. And so, I said at that point that once I got caught up with all those books, which I did right before Booktubeathon. Booktubeathon is a uh, annual uh, readathon they do in July. Put on by Ariel Bassett, who is an amazing booktuber. Um... I had caught up with all of the books that I was reading, and so I said after that I was going to only, going forward after readathons, at any given time I was going to read one physical book, which I am doing right now. I'm reading um, 
a Stuart O'Neill book called Emily Alone, and then I was going to read a Kindle book, and I'm reading Rotten Ruin by Jonathan Mayberry, and then I was going to listen to an Audible book, and I'm right now listening to Year One by Nora Roberts. And uh, I think the reason why I talk mostly about the audiobooks in here, I'm actually reading another book too. I'm reading. Uh, uh, by Mickey Spillane, The Year the Sea Rolled Back. It's a middle age book, middle grade book um, that I read when I was a little kid and I want to reread because I don't remember anything about it. But anyway, I don't even know that I finished it when I was a kid. I remember buying it, but I don't remember finishing it. My dad let me pick out any book in the store when we went to Chicago one weekend and that was the book that I had. And um, I've talked about it a lot, so I ended up just buying it on thrift books. But I think the reason why I talk about the audiobooks on here a lot is because I've just listened to it or I'm getting ready to when I've done my vlog. Um, but I know, I have friends of mine that all they do is listen to audiobooks and they don't make excuses about it, nor do I think they should. You know, I think in a technological world that we live in, I mean, if you want to say that, uh, audiobooks aren't reading, well then neither are Kindle books because, you know, they're not paper books. I mean, we can like start getting, you know, so like along the lines about that discussion and I don't really care. I mean, somebody can say to me, well, you're not reading if you do that. And I'm like, okay, I mean, if that's how you feel. <laughs> it doesn't change the fact that I have been introduced to these characters, read their journey, been affected by, you know, the story that they've lived and on and on and on. For that matter, and not only for that matter, but as well as the fact that, you know, um, people that are blind, you know, listen to a lot. I've had a lot of, you know, people that have reached out to me when I talk about audiobooks and it said that they are blind and um, that they listen exclusively to audiobooks. And um, I don't think people use Braille books as much today. I could be wrong, but I, I don't think they do. And um, so it's a really good resource for them. There's a lot of people out there that... Um, struggle with, you know, different kinds of, you know, like dyslexia and things like that. And it, it's hard for them to read and they enjoy. I was going on this tangent about audiobooks. I don't even know when it uh, stopped, to be honest with you. So I have no idea what I stopped at. But all I wanted to say is I was talking about people that I've had so many people that are blind reach out to me and say that they exclusively only listen to audiobooks. It stopped because I was at the 30 minute mark is why it stopped. And my camera shuts off after 30 minutes of filming. Um, but I've had so many people that were blind reach out to me and say, you know, that do I think that audiobooks are reading and that they're blind and that, you know, the resources for Braille books is not the way that it used to be and that the other resources that they have for reading they don't use and they like audiobooks. And I'm like, absolutely, I feel like audiobooks are reading. I don't think it really, ma I think, you know, I think that's the same conversation that if you're not reading the right, correct kind of books and you're not a reader and that's bullshit. And this whole discussion of what is a reader came around on booktube like a year ago and the book blog community and on bookstagram and stuff you know and a reader is defined by themselves you know it doesn't have anything to do with you know who you are as a person or what kind of books you choose to read or how you choose to read or you know by what format whether it's ebook or whether it's audiobook or whether it's physical copy you know as long as you're being taken through the journey of a book you're reading a book you're you're participating in the book is let's say it that way, you know? And I don't think anybody should feel bad about that. I think it's like, you know, when we uh, are splitting hairs over how somebody's reading a book, so. But that being said, for all of you out there that are worried that I don't read physical copies of books when I have a stack of, you know, 30 on my kitchen counter right now that I'm dividing into my reading plan for 2018, of which I don't have any, so I've got to <laughs> put the books places, and I'm constantly buying books at half-price books, and Barnes and & Noble, and thrift books, and Books A Million, and, you know, constantly getting books as gifts. I, what do you think I do with these physical copies? I read them. So, <laughs> I love, and honestly, I love a physical book more than I love an ebook or an audiobook all day long. I love to hold a physical. There is something in the back of my car that is like going back and forth. It's driving me crazy. But I love a physical book more than I love anything else in the entire world. I love to go to the library. I love to, you know, smell old books, which I know is crazy, but I just love books. And uh, so, yeah. 
don't think anybody should have to feel bad about how they're reading a book, you know? Nobody should. It's just, and honestly, it's just not that deep, right? There was something else I was going to address when it came to books, too. Because a couple other people were asking me about something to do with Goodreads. And I was not addressed, but I was going to tell you guys. What was it? Somebody asked on there. I think a lot of people are confused by what BookTube is. You know, BookTube is just a community on YouTube, like candle reviewers or like the beauty community. It's not like a place you go. It's just like different YouTubers that all they specifically do is talk about books. And they do book hauls and book reviews and... You know, a book haul is when you buy a bunch of books and you just show them or you get books in the mail and, you know, whatever. They do unboxings. They do read -a we do readathons. We do buddy reads. A readathon is when you like, is like a week or like three days or whatever. Sometimes they're 24 and 48 hours where you like read as much as you can. There's challenges you have. They're really fun. There's challenges you have to complete. A buddy reads or a group reads is when you read the same book with one other person or several other people and you kind of talk about it. It's a good way to become friends on good or buddy uh, on BookTube. There's book discussions. I just did a book discussion video today about um, authors versus reviewers on Goodreads because a lot of people are a lot of authors are very upset with the review system rating. It's just, it's silly to me, but um, on Goodreads and that all this kind of stuff. And then a lot of readers are saying that Goodreads is for readers. It's not for authors, which I don't necessarily agree. I think it's for all of us. And you can go watch my discussion video on my booktube channel if you want to see what I had to say about that. Um, but booktube is so fun. I love it, you know? And it's just such a warm and welcoming place. People are very nice. And even when you disagree with somebody, like, people aren't assholes, you know? Like... It's so interesting because I've gotten, like, several messages, like, a lot of messages from people that I'm, like, friends with in the BookTube community, and they're, like, and these aren't, like, closeted geeks that don't ever get out. I mean, you know, one of my friends is in law school, another one of my friends, you know, is, like, a grown adult woman and reads very intellectual stuff, you know, two of my other friends are, like, younger, they're, like, in their mid-20s, you know, because BookTube does tend to be a little bit of, like, a 20, you know, there's a lot of people that are even in high school that are on BookTube that are very successful, but I would say the average age is probably 24 to 30, something like that, you know, 22 to 30 on BookTube, but they all, like, a lot of these people reached out to me and they said, I don't really know what's going on. I saw something about it, you know, via social media, but I just wanted you to know that I'm supportive of you and I'm really sorry this is happening. And, you know, to hear that and <clears throat> just receive that kind of support within the BookTube community is amazing. And it's just a really nice, safe place over there. Even when people disagree with each other, it's like, hey, listen, like, I totally did, like, you might say, like, somebody might make a video and be like, I totally disagreed with what Peter's stance was in his video about Goodreads, but let me explain why I disagreed with his stance, because I think he said some things that were appropriate and some things that, or some things that were, you know, right on and some things that I didn't agree with at all, so let me explain why I felt that way, and uh, it's just very much that, you know, and I love that. I love that that is the bookish community, you know, that we're we're all there because we love books. We're respectful of each other. We're not stepping on each other's toes. You know, there isn't even really this big jealousy. There are people on BookTube that have, you know, hundreds and thousands of, of subscribers. And I'm not going to say they don't act a, like a little clicky or arrogant because I think they do a little bit. But really, I mean, in comparison to other parts of YouTube where if you see somebody that has three or 400 subscribers, they act like they can't be bothered with somebody that has a lot less. I mean, if you see them at like BEA, which is a book convention and things like that, or Y'all Fest, like they're very interactive with like smaller booktubers and not like in a way that is um, like, let me sign your autograph. It's very much like in a way like, hey, how are you? I loved your video that you did on this. Have you read this? But like, they're all friends, right? And there's no like hierarchy. And so they're then there isn't a whole lot of jealousy in the booktube community, which I think is awesome too. You know, it's like, and my booktube channel has grown, I think I have 11,000 or 12,000 subscribers on there, and that's in almost two years. And that's a lot of subscribers for booktube, honestly it is. I'm very, very proud of that channel. I love that channel so much. And um, I just love putting videos up there, and I love just, 
talking about books and reading books and finding new books. It's, I just love every bit of it. And, um, you know, it's all my life I have loved to read. And very few people that have come into my life, with the exception of Tanya and Alex when I met him. Alex doesn't read really as much anymore, but he did when I first met him a lot. He read memoirs. He still does from time to time. I just gave him Sam Lansky's uh, the, the Gilded Razor. But he, uh, you know, like he and Tanya are two people that really like to read in my life back in the, you know, she still does every day. But other than that, I haven't had a lot of, and my mom, my dad reads a shit ton, but he reads like all nonfiction and it's stuff on, I mean, he goes to the, the bookstore and buys the most bizarre books that you would, I mean, on things that like, you'd be like, well, why are you interested in this? You know, like he gets something that he's interested in. Like, I don't know, like the white elephant of Nigeria and then he reads five books on it and then he's like the expert on the white elephant of Nigeria and then he'll read something about like you know like I don't know just my dad is so cool but he gets very interested in like these very specific topics and then he reads everything on it and then he goes to the next topic so I don't like enjoy that kind of stuff but you know my mom's not around anymore for me to talk about books and she read very she read literary fiction and Tanya reads a lot of like mysteries romances things like that so I don't really have anybody to discuss the kind of books that I like to read with and booktube is a place where I can go and I feel like by watching a video because the most of the videos that I watch on YouTube I mean I watch probably 10 or 20 videos a day most of the videos that I watch on YouTube are, are booktube videos honestly and the other ones are beauty uh, influencers. I mean, I watch a lot of like, if I'm interested in something like for the day, if I'm, I'm like, oh, I wanna do time travelers or oh, I wanna like, you know, what's going on with like alien stuff. I love to watch all the alien. I love to watch conspiracy videos, all that kind of stuff because I'm interested in that anyway. <clears throat> but if it's just a typical day and I'm like, just kind of like watching stuff, I watch booktubers and I watch beauty influencers and not always the bigger ones like, I talk about Raw Beauty Christie a lot, and one of the reasons why I like her is that I feel like she welcomes us into her world. I like to see beauty influencers that don't just do tutorials and all that shit. I really, really, I'll tell you what one of my obsessions is recently is the get readies with the get ready with me's where people sit down and they do like Morgan Hanbury used to do this, I love her, where they do like to like not necessarily tutorials. They just show what they're doing as they're doing it, but they're talking about their life as they're doing it. I love those videos. Those are basically makeup mukbangs is what I call them, okay? Because they're sitting there and they're just having normal conversations while they're putting on their makeup and I live for them. I love them. And then I can put them on in the background like while I'm in the bathroom getting ready and then I very much feel like I'm getting ready with a friend like on a Friday night. I know it sounds corny, but that's how I feel. So, um, you know, those are the videos that I watch and a lot of booktubers and... It's nice. It feels like I'm having a conversation with those kind of people. And uh, I think the number one thing I miss about working in an organization is that I was, you know, I worked with a team of, you know, 10 other people and I was around people all day long. I mean, patients, you know, all day long and families and probation officers and stuff. And I haven't worked around people in almost well, 10 years this month. I left 10 years ago this month. And, uh, God, probably 10 years ago right now, I think, is this week. God, that's so weird. But anyway, um, who knew 10 years later I'd be on YouTube? Not me. But anyway, um, I, uh, you know, I don't interact with a lot of people unless I'm at Meyer or the grocery store or the post office or I'm, you know, have meetings with people. But like if I have meetings with people to set up like a team planning thing, like really that's like one at most two people for an hour, maybe two, you know, depending on what the project looks like. And then at the time that I set it up, if I have to train them how to do it, that's another couple hours. And then, or if I go in and do it, they don't, I don't train them at all. And then at the end, the follow up. So it's like, I don't really, and that's like, I do like three or four a month max. I'm not interacting with people a lot, you know? So it's nice to like, uh, watch YouTube videos. I feel like it's kind of my outlet to seeing other people. Do you guys feel like that or are you around people all the time? I think like 
Alex is around people all day long. And so I think like, cause he's not interested in YouTube at all. Like never, he very rarely watches my videos. And if he does, he typically watches like a vlog. And it's typically a vlog that he was in. <laughs> and then he reads the comments. Um, but I think for him it's like, well he and Tanya, neither one of them watch my videos. And um, it was interesting because I was watching a um, video with Lucas Krushank and they were doing, he and his boyfriend were doing like uh, uh, lie detector tests. <clears throat> and he asked his boyfriend if he watched all of his videos and he said yes and he passed the lie detector test. Like, <clears throat> what's interesting to me is like, I, I don't know, maybe I, I was more upset about this at the beginning, but I'm not, I really am not upset about it at all anymore. You know, Tanya and Alex don't watch any of my videos unless I specifically ask them to watch a specific video, <clears throat> which very rarely happens. I know I almost never ask them to watch videos and they and they don't. And uh, I'll be like downstairs and I'll hear like my vlog upstairs, like I'll hear myself myself talking and then I'll be like, are you watching my vlog? And Alex will be like, yeah, I just wanted to see the part with us, you know, blah, 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 whatever. I'm like, oh, okay. And I'm reading the comments. But both he and Tanya separately have said to me, we're with you so much. Like Tanya has said, I love you, Peter. I'm with you all the time that I don't really need to see a 15 minute video of you every day. Like, and I, I understand that. I respect that, you know? Um, and Tanya does watch a lot of YouTubers now. She's very hooked on YouTube, which is interesting. She got very into the drama community. Uh, Tanya can tell you uh, pretty much about every drama channel out there, who she likes, who she doesn't like. Um, we differ on some opinions about who she likes and who she doesn't like. I'm trying to think of somebody that Tanya really, really likes. Well, she doesn't understand a lot of the makeup community. So if somebody doesn't have like a personality, she doesn't really watch. She's not super interested in it. Does that make sense? So like she's not super interested in like the receipts kind of videos. Like she doesn't dislike them, but it's not interesting to her. Um, for some reason she is obsessed with Trisha Paytas. She loves Trisha Paytas. She's like, I think Trisha has been such a good friend to you. She's been like, Tanya's been in the car when Trisha's called and stuff like that. She's like, she's been such a good friend to you. She was like, I think, you know, people don't really understand who she is on camera. You know, she's obviously trolling, you know, she's like, she does it for entertainment value. Like it's weird. Cause Tanya kind of gets Trisha without even really watching a lot of her videos, but she watches her. She follows her on Instagram. She loves her. Um, she loves Shane. But she, oh, she watches a lot of people on You Now. Tanya watches a lot of, she, I got her hooked on You Now. But Alex isn't watching that stuff. Alex's favorite thing now is like if he's with a friend to like pop in my You Now streams. <laughs> Which is funny, I think, so. All of it's fun. I love it. I love everything about it. I mean, you know, I never thought this would be my world. And to be able to upload videos on a daily basis and have just an opinion about some bullshit and talk about it. And I mean, I really think through my videos before I post them. I really, really do. I really like thinking about what content I'm gonna post and what funny things I'm gonna do that day. And I specifically pick out what fan I'm gonna use. And I, I think about, I try to think about what songs I wanna sing, but some songs just come out. No, oh, a deer, a female deer, ray, a drop of golden sun. <laughs> I so wanted to be on Broadway when I was a kid. But anyway, um, I would put on shows for my mom in the living room. I'm sure that's really hard to believe. But, you know, like, I just love everything about this. I really do. And, uh, you know, it's just so much fun. It just is. I just don't even know how to explain it. It's so much fun. And uh, to interact with you guys and to talk with you guys. My camera shut off because of the heat. So I was talking about, like... Anyway, I just love this so much. I I don't really even know what else to say. You know, I don't, I, I get so excited about it. I get so excited about talking about it. Um, you know, the fact that I have, you know, my, my husband and my two best friends are so supportive of it in my life is amazing. Um, I just love it. I love everything about it, you know, and uh, I, I wish it for anybody. I think, you know, I get, uh, today the girl that, uh, the barista at Starbucks was like, oh my God, I heard you had a, a YouTube channel. I said, how did you hear that? And this guy came around the corner that's usually my barista. And he was like, I told her. And I was like, oh my God, you're embarrassing me. And she was like, um, she said something to the effect of like, 
I don't know. But anyway, she was like, oh, I want to start a YouTube channel, and I, like, really like arts, and I watch, like, art, ch I watch art channels on YouTube. I was like, there's an art community on YouTube? I didn't know, you know? And she's like, yeah, that's right. She goes, how, <coughs> what do you think about me starting? And I said, start it today. Go home and do it now. Like, don't wait. Start your channel. Like, what are you waiting for? It's so fun. I love it, you know? And, uh. Just get over talking to the camera. Just get over. What do you have to lose by putting your most foolish self out there in the world? You know what I mean? <coughs> nothing. Nothing. You make a fool of yourself. Some people like you. Some people won't. They'll laugh at you. Well, that's happening in the real world anyway. If you don't think it is, let me clue you in. I mean, it is. It's happening out there in the real world anyway. People are laughing at you. People think you're foolish. Some people love you. Some people don't. It's, nothing on YouTube is any different than it is in the real world. You know what I mean? So it's like... If you've wanted to start a YouTube channel, just do it. If fear is keeping you from that because you're afraid of what people will think, well, all of those things you're conjuring up in your head, somebody's thought it probably about you anyway. So, you know what? Don't let that stop you, I don't think, you know? And tell your story, whatever that is, whether it's makeup or candles, you know, or art or gaming or story times or whatever you want to do, you know, or vlogging. Just tell your life. Tell your story, you know. You can do that through all of that. I love that house so much. It has, like, the entire back is all windows, and it's gorgeous. They're always all lit up at night, too. I'm like, what is your electricity bill? My mother always taught me to turn the lights off when I leave a room. Did your mother teach you that? <laughs> Close the refrigerator door, refrigerator door. We're not air conditioning the outside. Or No, what did she say? Oh, close the back door. We're not air conditioning the outside. And close the refrigerator door. <laughs> All that kind of stuff. I don't remember what she said about the refrigerator door, but I do remember that. With the close the back door, we're not air conditioning the, back, the outside. <laughs> I'm ready for summer, kind of. I either want to have a really, really bad snowstorm, and I mean like a foot, where nobody can do anything, we get out of snow day, and then Alex gets to stay at home. Or I want, like we haven't had a snow like that in a couple years. Like really bad blizzard snow. God, I would love for that. We'd all have to stay inside and make fires, and I guess we did, cause like, well, when was that? Two or three years ago that the electricity went out and we had to go to Melissa's for one night. That's what I want, another night like that. Have you guys ever heard the song The Blizzard by Judy Collins? If I remember, I'll link it below. But Judy Collins is one of my favorite singers of life. She's a folk singer. She's phenomenal. And uh, I grew up on her music. Both of my parents loved her music. The song Both uh, Sides Now, which Joni Mitchell, I think, sang originally or wrote originally. Judy Collins sang and later did. And um, I just love all her music. I love her song My Father. I love her song... Uh, Suzanne and I mean I just love all of her music and uh, where is the time gone she did a song and it was called the blizzard and it was about this woman a lot of her songs are stories because she's a folk singer and she did a song called the blizzard and it's about so she's from Colorado and her sister lives in like uh, Sausalito and so she talks a lot about the west coast and uh or like the West, like Colorado and stuff. And this one song, The Blizzard, she talks about this woman and she's driving up somewhere in the mountain in Colorado and there's a horrible snowstorm, a blizzard. And she stops at the diner, this diner, to like have a cup of coffee. And as she's sitting there, like the snow gets worse and worse and worse and she meets this stranger and she refers to him as the stranger. And he offers her like a flask and they start drinking and then they tell each other these stories and they sit there and the snow gets bad and then she goes up to his cabin and stays there for the night. And they don't, she doesn't say it, but it's like romance happens, you know? And it's such a great song. Then the snow fell and the night passed. So you guys should go listen to The Blizzard by Judy Collins. It's on YouTube, you guys can find it. I have no idea because my camera has shut off now twice how long I've gone for and I don't want to go over an hour So I'm gonna stop now. I think I'm at like 45 or 50 minutes. Um, we'll just I don't know So anyway, God, I was all over the place tonight wasn't I? 
Keep your fingers crossed for me that I get a blizzard. That's all I want, a blizzard. I got my white Christmas, and I think that was because so many people collectively were hoping for me to get a white Christmas. Can we get a blizzard? Let's try for a blizzard, okay? Oh, while we're at it, let's try for a million subscribers. <laughs> Just a million, I mean, you know? <laughs> Come on, make this old man's day. Make me happy. <laughs> anyway, I love you guys, and I will talk to you later. Bye.